Hi, I'm Lauren Manson, the Executive Director of the Ohio Health Information Management Association. Today, I come to you to recognize and congratulate OHEMA's 2021 Achievement Award recipients. As you may know, in the past, we typically have an in-person award ceremony at the OHEMA annual meeting to recognize and honor these individuals. But unfortunately, this year due to COVID, we don't have an in-person annual meeting. Instead, we have a virtual conference. So instead, we're coming to you today virtually to congratulate our 2021 award recipients. Our first award today is the Ambassador to Education Award. This award goes to Karen Sockley. Karen is a manager at Cincinnati Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. There, she coordinates the department's professional practice experiences for the HIM and HIT students coming to the hospital. She always takes the extra time and effort to ensure that each student has individual attention and has a positive experience in their PPE. Thank you, Karen, for cultivating the next generation of HIM professionals. Our second award is the Professional Achievement Award. In 2021, this award goes to Dr. Nilgun Sischenesh. Nilgun is the Program Director of HIM at the University of Toledo. Not only has she earned several credentials and degrees in her 20 years as an HIM professional, she always gives 110% to health information management and her students, whether they are her students at the University of Toledo or students across the country. Her passion for health information management and being an educator shines. Thank you, Nilgoon, and congratulations. Our third and final award is the Distinguished Member Award. OHEMA's 2021 Distinguished Member is Dee Manley. Dee is a self-employed coding consultant. Not only has she had much, much success in her career, but she has served OHEMA, AHEMA, and the Ohio Regional Associations for many, many years. Dee served on the board in numerous positions from project leader to committee chair to director, president, and delegate, just to name a few. She presents frequently, develops online education, and has played key roles in planning OHIMA's coding events and conferences. Thank you so much, Dee, for sharing your time and expertise with OHIMA and the HIM profession. We greatly appreciate you and congratulations. Thank you and congratulations to the 2021 OHIMA Award recipients. Because we weren't able to honor them in person, our board director, Tanya Bates, who was in charge of the Achievement Awards this year, took some time to interview each of the award recipients. You can watch those interviews following this. If you happen to run into Dee, Karen, or Nilgoon in the coming months, please make sure you congratulate them and thank them for their service to the HIM profession. Hello, I am Tanya Bates. I'm the past president of OHIMA and I'm responsible for awards this year. And I have the distinct honor of presenting Dee Manley with the Distinguished Member Award. Thank you, Tanya. Would you like to tell us some things about yourself, please? Um, sure. I think um, one of the most significant aspects of my career has been having the privilege to mentor, teach, and grow along with uh, the talented coding professionals that I have worked with throughout the years. Okay. Can you briefly tell us about your HIM path? What led you to the career in HIM? Yeah, a, a 35 year career in a nutshell. <laughs> um, I got into the HIM course at a local college straight out of high school. So this was back in the 80s. And as most students at that time, I started out as a coder. Um, I was a coder for a few years and then had a manager that um, took a chance on me and promoted me to supervisor. And then for the next couple of decades, I held positions in management and consulting. 
And I'm very proud to say that I have been fortunate um, enough to work for myself for the past 15 years. What are you most passionate about as it relates to your career? Think about that one. Um, I mentioned, uh, you know, a little earlier that mentoring is what I was born to do, and I've done this in a variety of ways in my life, um, such as being a mom. Um, I was a personal trainer for a period of time. Uh, nowadays, I conduct live webinars on various clinical and coding topics. I love it because I'm always learning, and um, hopefully helping other HIM professionals improve their skills along the way. And what advice would you give to a student or someone new to the HIM profession to ensure success for them? Well, the HIM profession is a broad field. Um, the employment opportunities are many. You know, there's IT, revenue cycle, privacy and security, compliance, just to name a few. I mean, the list goes on and on. My advice to students would be, as you attend the classes, just see what lights you up and then take that path. Um, also getting involved with your local and state HIM associations, um, getting active on AHIMA's engage communities, which I know are changing to access now, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but be active on LinkedIn and just get yourself out there. And how does being recognized by your peers and receiving this award make you feel? Well, recognition is my love language. So <laughs> I'm extremely happy. I'm honored. I'm proud of this award. And I'm very grateful to have had a professional network throughout the years that have cracked the doors open for me a couple of times. <laughs> and what would you like your HIM legacy to be? Well, that I have had a positive impact on the HIM professionals um, that I've had the privilege to work with throughout the years. So is there anything, any last minute or last thing that you'd like to add? Um, just the HIM field has been phenomenal. I mean, I've always loved what I do and worked with some really great people throughout the years. And I'm looking forward to many more years to come. Well, with that, Dee, I um, have the great pleasure of knowing you, have, have, have had to work with you. Um, I am honored to present you with the Distinguished Member Award. It is much deserved. Thank you, Tanya. Congratulations. <laughs> so this is Tanya Bates. I am the past president and responsible for awards and achievements this year. I have the distinct honor of presenting the Professional Achievement Award to Neil Goon, Sishkanish. So Nilgun, um, I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, can you tell me what led you to a profession in education? Tanya, good morning. Um, I always loved and still love uh, learning new information as well as sharing my knowledge with students to change their lives for better. So I feel it is my responsibility to contribute to each student's intellectual development, um, being able to teach them how to apply the skills and knowledge they develop to improve their lives. Um, that kind of led me to, it, I felt like I was, I didn't even know I was born to be a teacher. <laughs> but later on, when I was uh, taking classes myself, I find out. And also, um, you know, I'll let you know, like later on, um, how I started my HIM profession. Being a coder, you kind of find yourself well, continuously teaching others um, on some parts of documentation, coding, or whatever. So, um, Pretty much that's uh, what led me to um, profession in education. And most of my teaching years, um, I had been a student myself. So playing both roles kind of helped me. Um, and going through the um, uh, doctoral program while continuing to teach, uh, actually, it reminded me why I became a teacher, because I love learning okay. <laughs> and sharing my knowledge. And so what do you like most about educating future HIM professionals? 
Um, I like serving as a role model for students in our program and other individuals who are in um, HIM field. Um, when students write after graduating, um, they write me, they contact me to let me know I was able to reach their dream job, um, their career goals in healthcare. Um, and I should be proud of them um, because we are, um, you know, um, having them graduate from the program and, uh, you know, succeed in the uh, healthcare world out there and um, to make a difference. Um, they found it, it's very challenging um, and rewarding. Um, I often receive other comments from students, they graduate um, thanking me for support and understanding and unfailing encouragement. Um, so for example, I, um, that's kind of natural for me. I like to give advice. Uh, I play that role too um, as a uh, instructor and also as a program director. Um, so whenever students ask my opinion or advice on something, um, I just advise them, um, try to kind of get into the right direction. And um, they, they even acknowledge that, that, you know, what, whatever I advise, it really helped them. I had a student who was in a preschool teaching career, 26 years, and she didn't know what to do when she, you know, she, uh, she graduated from the program or she was in her last semester. So um, that really, uh, that's the most I appreciate about being an educator. Uh, you know, uh, like currently two of our uh, graduates are uh, running for the, one of the OHIMA <laughs> board positions. So that makes me proud, you know, th those moments, uh, even going out in um, some of the facilities and seeing our students, their names out there. Uh, those are all, um, you know, uh, rewarding moments for uh, being an educator. And what has been your most proud moment of your career thus far? Uh, moments like this, <laughs> um, being recognized by my colleagues uh, uh, for doing what I love doing um, and being recognized by my students and seeing them succeed in their HIM careers. And each stage of um, my career, what I went through so far uh, uh, since 1997, um, you know, I am proud of moments when I earned my first coding certificate, that was my CCSB, uh, and then my RHIT, RHIA credentials, and lastly, earning my doctoral degree. That uh, took, <laughs> that was quite challenging, mm -hmm. um, trying to balance everything else. And family comes first, always for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, but uh, those were, uh, you know, the proud moments for me. How do you feel about receiving this award? Um, uh, I'm very thankful to my nominator uh, for taking time in nominating because there are so many other um, uh, OHIMO members out there, uh, you know, uh, deserve this uh, award, but sometimes we don't take the time to nominate them. <laughs> um, and uh, so I feel very privileged and honored. And I am also thankful um, to your committee, to you, Taya, uh, for taking time and working in the committees or um, doing what you do for o OHIMA to make this possible. Um, so all your effort and time, I thank for that. Um, can you briefly tell us about your HIM path? Okay, um, I will try to be as brief as possible. Uh, you know, everyone has their own story. Um, my story is maybe a little different than, uh, you know, some, some of my colleagues. Um, 
So my career path in HIM, it has been shaped up over the years. Um, it started in 1997, uh, so it has been 23 years. Um, so um, as I noted earlier, uh, original my name is uh, Turkish. So I was born and raised in Istanbul, Turkey. And um, I going to the school, uh, I always wanted to be a medical doctor, but when I graduated from high school, uh, things were working out in the country and all other unfortunate circumstances prevented me going to continue on my, um, you know, um, higher education, especially going to the medical school. So I wasn't able to reach my educational goals at that time. And um, soon after high school, I got married and my husband was already living here. So moved to the United States. That was a huge, huge change in my life. Um, and um, obviously at that time I couldn't continue uh, my education. And um, after I raised my kids, um, which I'm proud to say, I'm the third doctor in the family. I raised two, <laughs> I have a dentist and a, a physician. Uh, MD from OSU <laughs> graduates. Uh, after I raised them, I went back to school. Um, the way I started um, my HIM career, as I said, I was always interested in the medical field. Obviously, I couldn't go back to the medical school. Um, you know, uh, that is something I feel like is more traditional. You need to start at a younger age. Um, so I was helping out with one of our uh, physician friends at his office. He asked me to help. And uh, while I was working, I felt the need to go back to school because I didn't want to learn from someone's error, um, you know, um, untraditional way. I just wanted to learn it um, structurally. Um, so I went... Um, to um, medical office technologies program. And uh, while I was doing my externship, I was um, hired by one of the offices. It was under the, uh, one of the healthcare systems here. So I started as a front, front desk. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then um, kind of knowing myself, I wasn't happy. I, I was happy there, but I wasn't happy just, you know, being in the same position. So after two years, I moved to the central billing office, which we were overseeing 120, uh, over 100 uh, physician offices billing. And then that's, that's the time I uh, went for my credential, credentialing exam. Uh, so the CCSB was my first credential. And uh, those days you had to take your coding books, <laughs> go to Columbus and take all day tests. And um, that was my very proud moment when I passed that exam. Um, so that made me very valuable in my career. Uh, just earning my CCSB, they asked me to be an internal auditor. And then so at that time, I decided to go back to school to earn my RHIT. And then, um, and then I moved into acute care. Uh, we had a brand new hospital opening up. And I, we uh, started up the HIM department there with Bonnie Hamp, actually. And um, one thing led to another. Um, and uh, right after I graduated from the uh, two-year program, I was um, offered to teach part-time. So that led to my uh, uh, teaching career as well. So here I am, <laughs> 23 years later. Um, uh, so my last position, I was a corporate compliance auditor for uh, Promotic Healthcare System here, uh, which is one of the largest systems. So each step I learned from being physician office up to the corporate level. Um, so that's why I love, um, you know, I learn each step and then always um, ready to share my knowledge. Um, because even when you're coding, doing documentation improvement, um, auditing, you're always in a teaching mode. <laughs> right. 
Okay, so I have one last question for you. And the question is, what would you like your HIM legacy to be? Okay. Um, you can put it down. Okay. <laughs> uh, I want it to be um, um, my HIM legacy to be. She always cared about her students and she has been an inspiration and support to her students and colleagues, not just my students, but also my colleagues. Um, and she trained many HIM professionals who are doing an excellent job in their careers. That's how I would like to be remembered as. All right. Well, again, I would like to congratulate you, Nilgun, on your achievement, the, receiving the Professional Achievement Award. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, all the other community members as well. <laughs> My name is Tanya Bates and I'm past president of OHEMA and I am responsible for awards and achievements. I have the distinct honor of introducing Karen Sockley, who is the recipient of the Ambassador of Education Award. So Karen, what attracted you to the HIM profession? Um, hello. Um, I first began college enrolled in the laboratory technician program at Cincinnati State. After practicing drawing blood on a fellow student, I quickly discovered that this wasn't the type of career that I wanted. <laughs> so I researched the program manual and discovered the health information technician program it looked perfect for me. I could work in the healthcare setting in a non-clinical way and help patients. Okay. And what do you feel is your biggest accomplishment? I feel my biggest accomplishment is completing my bachelor's degree at 44 in health information management at the University of Cincinnati. I was a single mother and had always wanted to complete my degree, um, but I really didn't have time for the traditional classroom since I had a small child. So, and I think it was 2004, uh, the University of Cincinnati offered an online bachelor's program in health information management. And I was one of the first students to complete the program in 2007. Go Bearcats. <laughs> <laughs> what does receiving this award mean to you? Receiving this award means that I have made a difference in the HEM profession and a difference with the students who um, are given the opportunity to learn more about various opportunities in health information management. Can you briefly tell us about your path to HIM? Yes, I have a very long path to through <laughs> HIM, I should say. So I began working, um, I began my career working as a co-op student um, through Cincinnati State at Jewish Hospital, working in the file area. Some of you probably don't know what the file area was, but it was um, where I began. Uh, when I graduated, I was hired full-time working in release of information. And at Jewish Hospital, I had a lot of um, opportunities to work in different areas of the hospital, such as cancer registry, coding. I worked on the skilled nursing facility and also in the home health agency. While I was working in the home health agency, there was a a group of local hospitals that were joining a health alliance and they decided that home health wasn't very profitable and they were just gonna end the home health for the um, alliance. So at that time, um, I quickly found a job at Health South Rehab Hospital. Luckily I had all those skills from Jewish Hospital and experience. I worked at Health South Rehab for a little while and then um, I moved to accepted a position with Christ Hospital working as an admitting manager and registration manager. I was managing about 25 people on three different shifts. It was quite an undertaking since, um, you know, I was a new manager and had never um, managed that many people before. But luckily, I had an excellent director and coworker that were great um, mentors for me. Um, after working at Christ Hospital, there was a position open at Jewish Hospital, or not Jewish, I'm sorry, Children's Hospital. I had always heard good things about Children's Hospital. It's a great place to work. You get to help children. They, take, they um, are very good to their employees. So I interviewed for a manager of the discharge process area in health information management, and I was offered and accepted the position. I have worked there for 20 years. Um, and it's a great place to work. <laughs>
How does receiving this award make you feel? I'm very proud and honored to receive this award. I wanna thank Beth Liette for nominating me for this special award. I've worked with student interns for the past 20 years of my career. I feel it's important um, for the students to have a wide variety of exposure to areas open to them as him professionals. And what are your future goals? My future professional goals are to continue to work uh, in the position I'm in at Cincinnati Children's. I have a great um, director. We have a, projects we're working on now and we have some uh, projects in the future that's really gonna make some changes, um, positive changes to the HIM department at Cincinnati Children's. As far as my personal goal, <laughs> I plan to spend more time with my two grandchildren and also start traveling again once things are better in the world. Okay. So I have one more question for you, but I'm gonna ask if you would just hold up your award just briefly so that we can see it. And the question is, what would you like your HIM legacy to be? Okay, can you see my award there? Okay. So I hope that I make an impact on the students who rotate through Cincinnati Children's. I hope that someday when the students become HIM professionals and discuss their path, to HIM that they will remember the internship that they had at Cincinnati Children's and how it may have impacted their decision on what area of HIM they wanted to pursue. I hope that they remember the importance of their internship and are able to facilitate internships for students where they work. Thank you. Um, so again, I'd like to congratulate Karen Sockley on receiving the Ambassador of Education Award. Thank you so much.